Why does British English make everything sound so cute? <laughs> really? Well, a fish and chips shop. A chippy. A chippy. A, ch- a chippy. <laughs> I don't know if cute is the right word, but there is something. It gives it a certain little ting. Can- yeah. Candies. What do you call candy? Sweeties. Sweeties. Oh, sweeties. Yeah. And I, I know one word. What? Bubbly squeak. Oh, <laughs> bubble, bubble and squeak is a menu. Yeah. A dish. Yeah, bubble and squeak. I thought that was super cute. It's basically like whatever leftovers you have, you yeah. throw a bunch in it, like a Dutch oven, and you kind of cook it in the oven, and that's where you eat it. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Although it does sound like you're from the 60s or 70s. Okay. Yeah. Not too many people call it bubble and squeak <laughs> anymore, see. but I love the name. Yeah, anyway, right. uh, we are in Europe for today's culture vulture topic, mm-hmm. uh, football. And we do call it football, right? Because I think in North America, that's the only place in the world yep. that it's called soccer, right? Yeah, because even South America, you know, FIFA has, a, I think, a Spanish or a Portuguese name, but mm-hmm. it stands for football as in F-U-T-B-A-L right. and, and whatnot. There needs to be a distinction. Distinction in North America because of American and Canadian football, which is a ball that you throw Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. catch as opposed to kick. (laughs) Yes, which is rather confusing. So we're talking about soccer for our North America listeners, but I'm going to call it football from now on. Sure. Uh, Because we saw the news uh, last weekend, it was last Sunday afternoon UK time, that the Super League news started to get leaked. Yeah, Yeah. you brought it in for your story, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, And we didn't have a a chance to dig into it, so we thought today would be a good chance to do that so can you tell us exactly what happened there so it was just on the weekend when football games were being played and news started to leak that some of the biggest teams in europe had decided to form the super league that's the name they gave it as well with the backing of jp morgan one of the big investment banks who are going to give something like 3.5 billion pounds or dollars to them And this would mean that 15 teams would be founding members of this new league and they would not get relegated or promoted. There was not a chance of that happening, like, even just, if you finish bottom. It was just a standalone league. Yeah, but to kind of appease... I guess certain European expectations from sport, five teams would be allowed to come in every year, like five random teams who had done well in their domestic leagues, Mm -hmm. right? Okay, so that means the league would be its founding 15 members Mm -hmm. plus five invitees uh, based on their previous year's performance. Yes, yeah. But what it is at the moment, so this is what uh, took Steve a bit of getting used to is each country has its own league Mm -hmm. and that works just like the regular season in North American sports, right? But what doesn't happen is there's no playoffs at the end. Whoever finishes first in that league, they're the winner, right? Because you've consistently been the best team. Mm -hmm. We cannot get our head around playoffs because if you finish, what, like fifth or sixth, you could still be the best team that year. (laughs) That's not the case, (laughs) is it? It totally makes (laughs) sense. I get that argument too. Yeah. And so um, once your domestic leagues are finished, the people who finish in the top like few places, they get to play in European competition the Uh next season to win the European League, which is called the Champions League, right? So that's the biggest prize in football because other countries have decent leagues, but the money and the best players are in the European leagues, right? So they were going to say they're not going to participate in the Champions League anymore. We're just going to do this on the side. So domestic football, that's going to stay the same. You know, we'll still play in the Premier League in England, Tottenham Hotspurs, Arsenal, Man City. And so fans were immediately furious And the reason is, the biggest matter here for everyone was, how can you have 15 teams that have no chance of getting relegated? Like, that's not the point of sport. Sport is all about, if you lose, if you finish bottom, you are punished by going to the next league. And if you don't perform, you won't get promoted. Yeah. So the relegated thing, again, and I'll explain this as if I'm explaining it to myself, Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) if that makes sense. In the simplest terms possible for people who aren't fans of the league. If you finish in the bottom, like if there's six teams in a a specific league, and if you finish number six, you're kicked out to group B Mm -hmm. the following year. The next tier. If the top group is group A and the bottom group is group B, meaning the lesser teams, Mm -hmm. the sixth place team gets kicked out. They go down to the bottom group 
and the top place team from the bottom group gets to replace the sixth uh, place team the following year. That's yeah. that's what relegation is, right? Yeah, and promotion for the team in tier B, right? That's mm-hmm. so exciting, right? Yeah. That's what football and sports fans live for. Mm-hmm. It's why, you know, towards the end of the season, I think in America, if you're not anywhere near the playoffs, it's kind of boring because you've really got nothing to play for, right? You're not going to get relegated, right? Yeah. There's no relegation. But in the UK, it's both ends of the table where there's all eyes on, right? Mm. Because it's like, is this team going to fall out of the Premier League? for the first time in its history. So that relegation is a big part of the culture of the sport because Mm -hmm. it adds to the excitement of the season. Absolutely. And in European law, apparently it's enshrined that sport and business are two separate things. Okay. Right? It's not the same thing. So sport is all about fair play. It's all about competition, Mm -hmm. fair competition, and uh, access to the market in terms of being able to, if you play well enough, go up a league. Or if you play badly, you're going to go down a league. Mm. That's enshrined within the law. So that's why fans were like, we can't have a league without relegation. Okay. We're talk- so there was a big uproar in this, against this Super League, which has now been reversed, right? Yeah. So it only took about two days for <laughs> one by one, all the clubs in England at least, to pull out officially. But culturally speaking, part of the problem too was the fact that, and you're going to have to explain this to me, mm-hmm. they, fans of football in Europe, or in England, thought that they were bringing the American style of sports over to the UK? Yeah, and it's not just some random conspiracy theory. From the big English teams, Liverpool, Arsenal, and Manchester United are owned by big American sports like Magnets. You're talking John Henry from FSG at Liverpool, uh, the Glazers at Manchester United, uh, and then Stan Kroenke in Arsenal. And they all own like either MLB teams or uh, football oh, teams. Okay, That was where they made their money, or that's where they invested. And then they've come over to the Premier League thinking, you know, this is a good investment. I'm I'm sure they care about the clubs to a certain extent but from a fan's point of view it's like you're just trying to use us to make money mm. and like apparently some foreign owners because the premier league's the biggest money making league in the world right they they come over they want to make some money and some are very shocked when they learn there was a story an anecdote from blackburn who got taken over by some indian investors mm-hmm. and that season or the season after they got relegated and the investing in, indian owners admitted We didn't know we could get relegated. Like, uh, what is this? Uh, like, yeah, they were like, what's happened? That's We've like just... if I owned a team. <laughs> like, we, we got what now? <laughs> we're in a different group? Uh-oh. That sounds okay. <laughs> yeah, so they have been uh, kind of theorizing, a lot of the British fans, that a lot of the American owners, you know, they know each other from being in the same circles. Mm-hmm. So they've come up with this concoction where their businesses will be safe. Because if you get relegated, to be honest... The downside is you lose a heck of a lot of money, right? Mm. In terms of revenue from fans, from TV as well. Right. And it can, in fact, it has led to a few clubs going out of business, you know. And that's terrible for the community and whatnot. And I think that's what a lot of the uh, pro supporters of the Super League, none of whom seem to have been in England because there was Mm -hmm. no pro coverage. But that's what they were arguing. Like for the clubs, we are a business. We're employing people. But it sounds to me like it's not a cultural issue. Because the, the reason I want to learn about that is because Mm -hmm. and i'm sure it was for money for money as well but within the last few years nbc the television station in the united states uh nbc yeah they started broadcasting and promoting premier league games as far as i know it's some 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 sort of football league sure Mm -hmm. and then podcasts started popping up in america about the premier league like american podcasts about the premier league with Mm -hmm. american hosts yeah Conversely, Mm -hmm. the NFL, the National Football League, American football, in the last few years has started doing two or three or four games a year from Mm. their regular season Mm -hmm. in London at Wembley uh, trying to promote American football in the UK. And the fan base for American football in the UK has really grown substantially. Mm. So that's why when you said culturally they were insulted that, you know, uh, some Americans were trying to bring that aspect of the sport in. It sounds to me like it's not a cultural thing. It's that you don't know what this means to us. Uh, and and we don't want you here just for money purposes. Yeah, and the uproar was insane. Like, these owners weren't expecting this because they just made the announcement. Fans lost it, right? Uh, yeah, and they thought 
but of course the fans of our clubs are going to love this because we're going to be playing the best teams in Europe every other week, mm-hmm. right? And we'll be guaranteed to do that every season. Oh, so it wasn't the fans of the clubs that were going to be in the Super League. It was the fans of the clubs that weren't going to be in that were so upset. They were upset, but unexpectedly, the fans of the uh, clubs in the Super League as well were completely, I think they were even more upset. Me as an Arsenal fan, I was horrified. Okay, you know? but what, again, why? <laughs> Because that's not the point of football. The point of football is not that we're guaranteed our place there come rain or shine. Mm-hmm. We've got to earn it, right? Mm-hmm. You've got to play well. If right. you play badly, you should get relegated. You don't deserve to be there. And But, that's the American culture aspect. Like Fans mm-hmm. are like, that's what an American thinks. Yeah, of uh, course you'd be happy. You're playing the best teams. No, you've got to earn that right. And mm-hmm. I think now American fans, why they're getting into the Premier League, That's exciting, relegation. That's mm-hmm. almost more exciting yeah, than the, promotion. The possibility of being, well, yeah. Yeah. The, the thrill of being promoted yes. and the heartache or yes. heartbreak of being demoted <laughs> to, a, to another league. It's a complete, yeah, roller coaster. Uh, within football, if you get relegated down, mm-hmm. by the way, does relegated mean both up and down? No, relegated is down, promoted is up. Okay, if yep. you get relegated, um, what... time frame are we looking at on average Mm -hmm. to make it back up to get promoted back up again so the shortest time is a season if you finish first the next season you can come straight back up right because if you got kicked out if sorry you got (laughs) relegated from the top league yeah you automatically become the best team in the bottom league do you not well you might think like that but it's all different every team is different there are some that bounce straight back up but Mm -hmm. some just the atmosphere around the club becomes really dark and some will go back to back to back relegation They'll drop like four divisions, season after season. Their fan base must disappear after that. Well, that's the thing about football. It's not about where you... If you love the team, you Uh follow them thick and thin. So there are some teams who've done that, and they've still got like 30,000 fans in the stadium. That's the Mm. beauty of football, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what real fans are craving. And the other shady part of this was none of the managers... All mm-hmm. the players were consulted before the announcement. Ah. So, you know, to have these negotiations behind pure, the back. Pure business decision. Yeah, it was just the CEOs, right? Ah. And just the chairman. Right, because for television rights, mm-hmm. yeah. they would have been able to sell sponsor after sponsor after sponsor on this, for right? For sure. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's what they said. They tried to package it. They said, we're going to make record amounts of money, but we are going to give that to grassroots yeah. football, you know? And it would oh. trickle down a little bit, but not like they were intending. Mm. I, get, I, was, I was trying to think, you know, I do get... I do get the um, excitement of the relegation and the promotion Mm -hmm. and the heartache that comes along with it. And I get that cultural aspect of football. But if you compare it to North American sports, let's call it, you know, the NFL, for example, Mm. National Football League, the American Football League, you have a chance to win Mm -hmm. every – so it's like hitting the reset button. Mm. (laughs) If you lose one year – yeah. Your fan base is still hopeful and excited because at least they have a chance to win next year. Mm -hmm. Whereas in England or in Europe, you get kicked out, sorry, relegated, (laughs) and then you don't have a chance. You don't even have a chance in that group for the following season. Not to win the Premier League, but then you've got the chance of promotion again, right? So that... If you get promoted, it's again like you've won the lead. Oh, culturally speaking, that would, <laughs> that would not fly in the United States or in Canada. That whole, that it's whole completely thing. different, But isn't it's it? fun to have two different systems, yes. I think. And yeah. it's fun to learn about it as well. Peter, thank you very much for that. That concludes our number one today. Please stick around for the second. We're going to learn some footy lingo. Yes. Is it just the Spanish-speaking countries where they really get into... No, because they do it here in Korea, too, when the national team scores a goal. Uh-huh. Goal! Do they do that in England too? No, that is distinctly South American to us. But I did see Korea does that now a lot. Yeah, yeah. since 2002, I think, as well. Yeah, oh, golly! So. Yeah. Like that, right? What do they say in England? Like, oh, look at that. <laughs> And it's the ball is in. in the net. Yeah. <laughs> One the, nil. Yeah, they try, though, with <laughs> iconic games. Like, if it's the World Cup and they know it's an important goal, they'll try to come up with something very, you know, witty. They don't like, they think saying goal like that is just lazy. Oh. Uh, like, because it's every goal is a goal, right? Oh, they'll put, uh, a, they'll put a few sentences together. Yeah, so for the 66 World Cup when we won, right, Jeff uh-huh. Hurst was uh, approaching the, the Germans' goal, right? And they were like, they think it's all over. 
It is now when he scored, and that's mm. become iconic, like oh, the I piece see. of commentary. Uh, I kind of yeah. like that better. Yeah, it is. It's way better. Goal it's, is just, it's exciting, but you hear uh-huh. it every game, right? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, so football lingo, football language today. Yeah, and I mentioned one, so I, w- I want you guys to guess what these are. What was are, it again? Okay? Uh, lino, but I'll, I'll combine it in a sentence. So, so uh, this would be said by the fans, or maybe managers, maybe even a player, actually. Mm-hmm. Lino, you're having a bubble bath. Lino, you're having a bubble bath. Yes. Well, that sounds delightful. <laughs> Lino. Lino. You're having a bubble bath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See? <laughs> British English, everything sounds cute. Lino. <laughs> It does. You're right, actually. Uh, Lino is in ref- reference to a person? Yes, I'll give you that hint, yep. Okay. Lino. L- the line judge. Is, what what the, does that the, mean? The referee. Oh, oh. the oh. lino. Because they wear the, the umpire, umpire referee. Referee. The referee's uniforms, they're striped. They are in like UFC and other American sports, but not in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, they wear yellow jackets or something. Right? They, they do wear yellow t-shirts sometimes, but usually it's just plain black. But they're not striped. Oh, yeah. No, they're not striped. So it's not the referees. It's not the referee. It's the line judges. They're called linesmen. Yeah. L- linesmen. linesmen. Okay. Yeah. They're the okay. ones who call offside, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So Lino is linesmen. Lino is linesmen. And you're having a bubble bath means, well, to take a bubble bath means uh, you're really relaxing. Right. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just taking some time off. <gasps> so Lino, you're taking a bubble bath means, excuse me, lines person, you are not paying attention. And oh. caring about this game at all. Yeah. You're not calling the offsets. Uh, you're on sides. Off sides. <laughs> Sorry. Why is this off- offset? Yeah. Well, you're quite close. It's actually from Cockney Rhyming Slam, Bubble Bath. It rhymes oh. with laugh. So mm. it means you're having a laugh in British English. That means that's a ridiculous decision. That's a terrible call. Yeah. Okay. Cockney is, is unfair. It we... is unfair. <laughs> I, I will give you that. But yeah. that's the working classes who okay. really like football. All right. Okay. Uh, another phrase. Fergie time. What does Fergie oh. time mean? Pete. Uh, sorry, Kate. <laughs> yeah. Go on with this one. Well, why, why me? I took, I took the last one. <laughs> well, that would have been easier. Fergie. Okay. Fergie time. I'll guess. <laughs> yeah. It's time to listen to some Spice Girls music. <laughs> why Spice Girls? Fergie was one of the... Oh, no. She's in the royal family, isn't she? Yes, yeah. she was the redhead princess. Who looks like one of the Spice Girls. Oh, members. she does. Yeah, the ginger one. Yeah, <laughs> Jerry Halliwell. There you go. That's useful in football, isn't it? No, Fergie, and you will have heard of this guy. Hold Alex on. Fer- Give Kate a chance. Okay. No, yeah. Alex Ferguson. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's his time to shine. <laughs> Who's Alex Ferguson? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, He's a prominent dear. figure in the, he was the coach. Premier League. He was the coach of the British national team. No, Manchester United coach. Okay. And he had Pak Ji Song, you know, for all oh, those yeah. years. And so Fergie time, because he was the most successful manager of all time, what he would do at the end of the game Mm -hmm. is if his team was losing, he would go on the touchline, look at his watch and tell the ref, you know, you've got to add on time because there were lots of injuries and lots of things. Uh, And the ref would get influenced by that. It would work. And so many times the ref would just keep playing way longer than he should have. And commentators will say, oh, we're going into Fergie time now. Ah. And often Manchester United would score the equaliser. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Interesting. So the, comment- the commentators would say, oh, they think it's over. But it's not. <laughs> it's Fergie time. It's Fergie time. <laughs> <laughs> I love Steve's British accent. <laughs> Sugar babes. I'll tell you who doesn't. Every person from England listening to this show right now. All right. Uh, so far, we've learned, Lino, you're taking a bath. Bubble bath. Bubble bath. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> Fergie time. Yes, and you've got... A little bit close in some instances, but I wouldn't give you a full point yet. Okay. Let's see about the next one. What is a magic sponge? A magic sponge. Okay. Ooh. That is a, f- a young, talented football player <laughs> who absorbs mm-hmm. knowledge of the game. Oh, Very quickly. Like a sponge. Yes. I like that. What about you, Kate? What's your inkling? I feel like it's the worst goalie ever for <laughs> any kick. It just goes straight into the goal. Oh, he's like drawing the balls to yeah, him. Yeah, it's like, like a, a spo- magic sponge. <laughs> That's a good like, uh, little um, theory. But I guess then he would be saving them all, though, if he was huh? the sponge. The balls would be going to him, right? So he's kind of drawing them <laughs> in. But oh, but he's got going holes like a goal. sponge. That's great. <laughs> no, magic sponge is more literal, actually. It is... 
Not so much used these days, but when the Premier League first started, that's what physios would carry going onto the pitch, right? And it would be literally, when I was playing as well as a teenager, mm-hmm. a bucket of water and a sponge. And wherever you were injured, whatever the injury, they would just rub that on you. Oh. And then you'd be expected to get better oh. somehow. Oh, like, kind of like a placebo effect? <laughs> it was weird, yeah. You'd get up and you'd be fine. <laughs> and so it's also used tongue-in-cheek when a player kind of dives, uh-huh. feigns injury, and yeah. they say, oh, so the magic sponge has worked its wonders. Uh. And they're up in two seconds. seconds yeah yeah uh that's a fun one i didn't know that so historically that would be like the it's kind of like the home remedy for whatever the physios would run on with a bucket and it just had a sponge in it i guess they knew that Um. no one's ever really hurt in soccer (laughs) they're all faking it (laughs) okay this one interesting uh what is a hospital pass hospital pass hmm i was hoping some of these would be Mm. self-explanatory this is linked to what it means A hospital pass. Mm -hmm. So, Kate, um, Uh you get a hall pass. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. uh, When you can, you're free to roam around the halls and go to the washroom or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would a hospital pass be? You're free to go to the hospital if you need. (laughs) You fake your injury. The magic sponge doesn't work. Then you need a hospital pass to get to the hospital. I like your reasoning. but And then you're having a belly bath. Sorry, (laughs) bubble bath. (laughs) Belly bath. This is much more related to passes in, you know, in any sport, not shooting, but passing. Oh, Oh, passing the ball. Actually passing the ball. Yeah. So a hospital pass is one in which. Oh, desperate. It's a desperate pass. Mm, no, it mm. could be. I see where you get your reasoning. But it is a pass in which you've passed the ball a little too short to your teammate. Mm-hmm. So the opposition has a chance to slide in with a crunching tackle. Uh-huh. So basically, it increases the risk of injury to oh. the player. And you say, oh, that was a hospital pass. You know, you sold your teammate short. Yeah. He could have got a broken ankle. And sometimes it does result in a terrible yeah. injury. Yeah. We have that in hockey culture, too. Uh-huh. Uh, if I'm skating forward and the person behind me is passing me the puck, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they should pass it to my stick yeah. so that I can kind of keep my head up because sure. someone is coming towards me to hit me. Right. Yeah. But what they'll do sometimes is pass the puck in your skates. Okay. So you have to look down and search for the puck. Oh. And, and then your person search- coming towards yeah, you. Oh, and man. They- Yeah. Line, There's yeah. no term for it, though. But we don't have a term for that. You should start that. Hospital of, pass. Kind of pass. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, I like the reasoning behind that, too. Yeah, it's a fun one. Okay, let's do another one. Yo-yo club. What is a yo-yo club? Steve. Oh. Someone who gets relegated and promoted regularly. Oh, yes. Hey. I, was th- I was thinking you would not know that because there's no promotion relegation. Do, I get, yes. a, do I get a bonus point for using the terms properly, relegation yes. and promotion? Absolutely. Uh, did you know that or was that a wild guess? Well, that- it just makes sense. Up, down, up, down, up, down, oh. like a yo-yo. Exactly. There are clubs like that who keep getting promoted and relegated season after season. Mm. Mm-hmm. They're just like the in-betweeners, basically. Yeah, and their fan base is the most emotionally unstable. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Happy one year, sad the next. Absolutely. Uh, Another. All right. Hair dryer treatment. Hair dryer treatment. Yeah. In Korea, that would be really confusing because treatment is that stuff you put in your hair, like conditioner. Uh Uh-huh. But we're not talking about that. All right. Hair dryer treatment. Well, let's do this. Let's see if anyone else out there knows the answer to this. Text in for 50 or 101. If you know what it means in football... Hair dryer treatment. Yeah, to get the hair dryer treatment. If a bunch of people figure it out, uh, we'll pick one to give away a 10,000 won coffee voucher. What was it again? The hair dryer treatment. Hair dryer treatment. Mm-hmm. 1216 texted in and said, an angry verbal reprimand, presumably, I'm, I'm guessing, from, oh. from a lino. yeah he's just shouting so much it's like like a cartoon your hair is like blowing in the back do you think that's the correct answer then kate my guess was going to be like uh when you go for like a heading kind of a shoot okay for heading yeah and then you miss the ball Uh (laughs) so the ball whizzes (laughs) Oh, Past like, your like hair. a hair dryer, uh, a yeah. gust of yeah. air. That's clever. My guess was going to be the opposite of a verbal reprimand. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be like when you go to the salon and you get the hair dry- dryer treatment. Mm. It's just luxury treatment. So, ah. so if like the star player, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, I don't know, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yep. 
the referees, they don't call as many penalties against him. Ah. Uh-huh. He gets the star treatment. So I think the hairdryer treatment is the star treatment. We'll oh. have another guess. Oh, yes. Or maybe the crowd, like a, like a star player comes out onto the field mm-hmm. and then the crowd goes wild. Oh. And from afar, you hear it's like... Ah. Oh, it sounds like, like a hair dryer. It kind of sounds like a hair dryer. Mm. That's very clever. <laughs> well, Steve, you know, coming from a hockey background, very namby pamby compared to us manly footballers. <laughs> it's not what you thought at all. It is one two one six. Well done. I wonder if you knew that. Yeah, it's when coaches, especially Ferguson, used to do this, mm-hmm. scream at his own players when they oh, did something wrong, my. like in their face, oh. and literally like a hair dryer. You yeah. totally could have stopped Kate and I from our five minute. <laughs> <I know. laughs> <laughs> totally well done, missing one, the two, mark. One, six. <laughs> uh, nice hair dryer treatment. Mm-hmm. That's a fun one. Uh, one last one, shall we? Okay. What does it mean when the players down tools? Down tools. Yes. Tools like T O O L S. Yes. Mm. Huh. Down tools. He's they... down tools. She's down tools. Down tools. Uh, lacking. the necessary skills you need tools to construct mm, something y e p so if he's down tools or she's down tools it means she doesn't have the skills he doesn't have the skills to compete oh i like that okay kate uh drinking water or energy drinks to replenish themselves oh interesting it's like you're downing oh like, downing a drink yeah we yeah. do say that in the uk a lot don't we down it down it uh steve is closer but not quite there When you down tools, this might be a football player thing. I don't think hockey players would do it. You're no longer trying your best. Uh, Like often managers will fall out with the whole dressing room. And then you can see on the pitch, they're not trying as hard as they could. They have down tools. Hockey players do that too. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. And then they're not very popular on the team anymore. And they they often get traded. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Really fun quiz there, Pete. Thanks for that. We'll come back and we'll wrap up the show with your messages. Here's Jesse J. Domino.